The Nazi regime boasted of being pure, Aryan and traditionalist, but these assertions had a dark double side in the sexual realm. Unlike the principles that they proclaimed in public, the Germans had a very ambiguous relationship with what happened in their privacy. On the one hand, family values and tradition were promoted as a way of life, going so far as to severely punish any desire that was out of the ordinary. On the other, Adolf Hitler himself has a history of extreme lewd practices that included violence, sadomasochism, and an infamous obsession with his own niece. Next, we are going to reveal to you what they never told you about the Nazis' link to sexuality. If you are sensitive, we recommend that you be accompanied. Let's get started. Throughout the Second World War, all the armies attacked any civilian they found in their path, but the ones who suffered the most from the siege of the soldiers were the women. Sexual assaults or forced prostitution were the order of the day and many of the German men satisfied their despair by resorting to these acts supposedly prohibited by their beliefs. Sexually transmitted diseases, such as syphilis and gonorrhea, were extremely common among Nazi fighters, resulting in heavy casualties. The Bermacht and Bathen SS became alarmed when soldiers began to run short to resist the Allied advance. Each recruit was indispensable to protecting the Reich and they could not afford to lose them due to their sexual behaviors. The solution to avoid unnecessary infections was allegedly devised by Heinrich Himmler, leader of the SS, who commissioned the Dr. Olin Hannison to design an inflatable doll that was capable of satisfying the sexual appetites of the troops. The mass production of this doll met the following characteristics, to be of the Aryan race, to measure 1.80 and to be endowed with fleshy lips and prominent breasts that would make it appetizing to a young soldier who has not yet lost his virginity and who I dreamed of doing it in the arms of a Valkyrie. This escort was named after Borghild, a female figure from Norse mythology, and her beautiful face and voluptuous body were modeled after athletes Wilhelmina von Bremen and Annette Walter. However, the doll was not very successful among the young Nazis, since they preferred sexual abstinence rather than doing it with a plasticized girl. On the other hand, they found it very shameful to be captured by the enemy with this sexual artifact and branded as depraved. The Third Reich practiced a double standard, since they conceived prostitutes as antisocial elements that should be sent to concentration camps. On the other hand, they developed a system of brothels in the occupied territories and even in the same forced labor camps. Whenever possible, the Nazis used existing prostitution establishments, looking for local vendors to help them find girls. In most cases, they directly used prisoners of war who could not refuse, unless they wanted to end up in the gas chamber. These women were, without a doubt, sexual slaves. They underwent regular medical examinations, and if they were found to have contracted venereal diseases, they were supposedly hospitalized. However, on a daily basis, infected women were killed so as not to waste money and time. This brothel system had two objectives. The first, to have sexually satisfied soldiers to contain sexual assaults on local women. Second, brothels were a cure for homosexual relationships among soldiers, considered unnatural. This system was also at the service of Nazi ideology, which did not allow the mixing of races. Polish, Czech and Soviet women belonged to the Slavic ethnic group, so the soldiers could have sexual relations with them inside the authorized brothels. In the case of the Jews and the Gypsies, they were completely excluded from this system since, according to the racial hierarchy of the Third Reich, they occupied the lowest rung and deserved to go to the extermination camps. On July 14, 1933, the Nazi dictatorship fulfilled one of its wildest dreams, the enactment of the law for the prevention of offspring with genetic diseases. This new regulation gave the state the power to racially cleanse its population, an extremely twisted measure. 
It was written by Falk Rutka, a lawyer, Arthur Gutt, a doctor and director of public health affairs, and Ernst Rudin, a psychiatrist and one of the early leaders of the German racial hygiene movement. Men and women who suffered from any of these supposedly hereditary conditions had to undergo forced sterilization processes, mental weakness, schizophrenia, manic depressive disorder, genetic epilepsy, Huntington's chorea, genetic blindness, genetic deafness, severe physical deformity, and chronic alcoholism. They also included in their list people who had more than one-eighth of Jewish blood in their lineage. The German authorities, relying solely on prejudice and biased diagnoses, demanded the sterilization of approximately 400,000 German men and women. For men, the usual method of sterilization was vasectomy, and for women, tubal ligation, an overly invasive procedure that caused hundreds of deaths among German girls. Despite what was seen in the photographs, for Nazi ideologues and scientists, homosexuality was a hereditary malformation and had to be cured. Homosexual behaviors were classified as dangerous crimes against morality. To protect society from people with hereditary diseases, including the homosexual community, and to defend public morality, mass castrations were carried out, both voluntary and compulsory. But the incredible thing about this practice is that it was not intended as a punishment, but as a cure for what the Nazis believed was a genetic deviation. At Himmler's initiative, to try to cure homosexuality, suspected prisoners had to visit brothels once a week until they admitted that their sexual orientation was not natural. It is not possible to calculate their exact number, but it is estimated that around 2,000 men were sterilized. Very active in this field were Dr. Gustav Boeders and Dr. Karl-Heinz Rodenberg, who, in an article published in 1934, admitted to castrating some 60 moral delinquents several years before the law allowed it. The most extreme case was that of Dr. Karl Vernet, a Danish SS doctor. Vernet, who claimed to be able to cure homosexuality with a gland of his own making, enlisted the support of Himmler himself to carry out a series of sinister genetic experiments on inmates of the Buchenwald concentration camp. The trials consisted of implanting the gland in the groin area of 15 homosexual prisoners, a gland that supposedly released an artificial male sex hormone. The result of the tests consisted in the death of the majority of the prisoners subjected to the procedure. There are a number of rumors that weigh on the Führer's sexual behavior, which are as terrifying as everything around his figure. To begin with, we highlight the peculiar relationship that the dictator had with Jelly Robble, his 17-year-old niece. The Führer became obsessed with her to the point of forcing her to have perverse carnal relations. The Nazi defector Otto Strasser even claims that Hitler enjoyed being urinated on by her niece, the girl had no choice but to give in to the strange requests of her powerful uncle. Six years later, Robble would be found dead with a gunshot wound to the chest in the dictator's apartment. At just 23 years old, the young woman ended her life, or that is what the official version says, although it is suspected that she was murdered and that the Nazis destroyed all the evidence that associated the Nazi leader with this incestuous trend and taste for the most depraved sex. The deep homoerotic connotation that was in the aesthetics of the Third Reich chosen by Hitler was always controversial. Behind those whips, uniforms and black leather clothing there seemed to be a sexual preference towards the male gender and a sadomasochistic drive was glimpsed. He was the Führer. She a loyal German, ready to do her duty. But she wasn't prepared for what Hitler had in mind. She told Zeisler, He suddenly fell on the floor and begged me to kick him. She looked down at the Führer lying naked at her feet. She was ready to do her duty for the Führer, but she was sickened. She told Zeisler, He pleaded with me. He condemned himself as unworthy. And I finally gave in to his wishes.
That is why another of the names in the promiscuous life of the Fuhrer is that of Renata Muller, a German film actress, victim of Hitler's repeated perversions. The young woman, who according to official history threw herself from her balcony committing suicide, supposedly died after the dictator had a sadomasochistic sexual relationship with her, ending her life in the process. Another of the rumors that haunt the figure of Hitler is that he was addicted to pornography. Apparently, he had a voyeuristic drive that led him to invite prostitutes to his mountain refuge. There are many myths and legends that have arisen around the lewd and perverse behavior of this fearsome historical figure. A long list of assumptions, nightmares and depravities that can never be fully verified. We reached the end of this video and we didn't want to stop asking you, do you think Hitler's perversions were real or fake? Leave your opinions in the comments below. We thank you for watching until the end and we look forward to seeing you in the next installments of Military History.